Hello YouTube, this is Judging Game 44 here, and today we are here to review Season 2, Episode 1, Dragon the Nine Realms, Unicon. Now, this episode, I honestly have mixed opinions about, so let's begin. It first starts off where Tom and the others are in the Crystal Realm, where basically, they have now the sensors that progress Icarus had around their whole entire small city. Where the kids couldn't sneak out with. Why do they have these sensors? Where do they got them? Because I think in season 4 we actually see them again. Not quite sure. But honestly. For some reason they had made the decision just to grab these. And actually set them all around the entrance. So if any dragon did pass the sensors would go off. And Alex would see it. Interesting plot. Now of course that's not really what the plot is. That's just how it's going to be setting up later on in the series. So, what happens here is that the gem breakers that bully Plowhorn from last season are back, but yet yeah, they're bullying another dragon and they trap it under rubble and then they left. June and the others all go and they find this small little cute dragon that June believes is a unicorn, well, sees it as a unicorn in a way. Personally though, to me, it's more like a mouse because it has those buff teeth and really, I was like, okay, it's cute, but kind of weird looking. But anyway, besides that, I do kind of wish they had a little bit more design to it, because it looks bald and everything. Like, I mean, you could have given it a little bit more design, seriously. But nonetheless, everyone wants to go because it's time, and June wants to take the dragon back home. Everyone's completely against it, saying it's basically, it can take care of itself, and we will look after it once we come back tomorrow. June, on the other hand, says no to it and actually sneaks it behind their backs. And, to our surprise, her brother, Eugene, is here. Now, I gotta be honest, when I saw this, bringing in a new character right away, right after, that was kind of a disappointment to me, because, like, okay, Dragon Nine Realms Season 1 was about introducing the characters and everything. But, and also possibly introducing the next villain of season 2 at the very end with Olivia's old time rival. But here, already introducing a bunch of new characters. June has a brother, and I know a lot of people complain about the whole entire two head dragons rip off from Bling and Blanche. Okay, you get the point. Basically, Eugene, I kind of felt like it was not really necessary, plus, he doesn't really serve that much of a purpose in this season. But what happens here is May is pretty much saying, oh, I hope you don't mind, June, but I gave her, your brother your room because he likes the sunlight. And so June now has to move to the other bedroom. And also, besides that, June is also, well, no, Eugene, but I'm honestly just going to call him Gene because I prefer Gene than Eugene. Anyway, Gene is pretty much a bully to her sister. And really is just a jerk, but pretends to be nice around his mother. Now, nonetheless, throughout this episode, we, we, Eugene, June is trying to figure out this whole entire dragon, learn about it. Turns out the dragon is not like fish, but it has this weird thing with dragon nip, which this is kind of a bit weird, but basically they're snacks, some type of cheesy thing that this thing loves. It's basically a popper unicorn where basically it has a small horn on its head, but it, there's a little hole that could pop out the seed to popcorn and just make a mess. Jean is pretty much wondering what the heck is going on because the dragon's causing trouble and June is trying to hide it. And eventually they're all trying, they all eventually find out the other riders and they're all mad at her. And now they're all trying to. There were some weird jokes in this, like D'Angelo smelling someone's shoe that she he found the garbage, and when he did, he, like, Linda, like, he actually knew who she was, like, okay, there's gotta be a few questions with that, but I'm not gonna ask. Anyway, really, this, anyway, throughout this episode, it's basically trying to get back to the Fisher, and Tom is mad, because also, in this episode, we discover what actually happened in, la in the season before finale. Where it turns out when Tom was being dragged down, he actually broke free and told Thunder to shoot the Fault Ripper, causing him to collapse, causing the Fault Ripper to fall to his death. Wits gave Tom PTSD, which 
I gotta be honest, that was an interesting idea. And Tom has been basically hiding it. Which, it also explains what Tom was saying, that he was, he hopes it was fine. Because he has regrets what he had done. Although, it really was not much of a choice. The Fault River would have caused more trouble and might have actually caused the whole entire fissure to fall down into the ground. But other than that, that's the end of the Fault River. And, well, Tom is hiding it. And June, well, of course, everyone's mad at her, but June asks, look, I made a mistake. Did you ever did something you regret? And Tom had that flashback of what he did, and he does agree. And I mean, I get the point why everyone, a lot of people are mad at June. But to be honest, I wouldn't have blamed her because back when I was her age, I would have probably done the same thing too with a wild cat. A stray cat or something. I have done that before. Where we took cats off the streets and raised them. But other than that though... Yeah, I can kind of understand what June was thinking. She didn't want some small, helpless creature. But as it turns out, this dragon is more dangerous because they soon find out it can create very powerful bubbles that can actually burst full fire. And everyone's getting scared. And while the other, other dragons like it, actually finds it. And once they do, they have to try to get back to the fissure and get back to the hidden world. Of course, this leads to a problem... And honestly, I will admit, the bubble, all these bubble dragons and all going against each other fighting was actually really kind of funny. I really did love how they come, they were trying to run to the fissure and get the dragon back. And not to mention, it was pretty much hilarious. So, what do I gotta say for this episode? Well, when they finally did got to the, well, I mean, not finishing the episode up, what happened was they all finally did, and the dragons fly back down. But before they did, they released one combined bubble. It's big and it's going to blow up the whole entire fissure they tried. And all the dragons are, and riders are working together to make sure it doesn't happen. Getting the bubble far away and freezing it, which was a surprise. But then they're able to get down and no one knows and everyone's a, and it's still a secret. And as for Jean, Jean has pretty much been locked up in the whole entire... In a freezer, well, no closet in the store. Which I didn't know this place had a store, but still... But anyway, yeah, this is based, the Fisher is basically, there's a small town next to it they made. But other than that, really, really what happened was Eugene was trying to find out, but June tricked him and pretty much locked him up. After that, we don't see him until the end of the season, but we'll get more into that later. Now, really, they all discuss, yeah, that's fun. Now, really, what was my opinion about the show? Well, oh, sorry. Well, okay, I got to be honest with you. I did like this. I did love how come they were, like, trying to get the dragon back and they were causing all these problems. I did agree what June said. And, I mean, what June was saying about, oh, it's a small, helpless dry dragon. And it's surrounded with all these big dragons. I mean, yeah, wild animals, there are ways they take care of themselves and protect themselves in, in the wild for real life. Even small, little, helpless creatures have their ways of surviving. Which, this dragon, the Gem Breakers, now might have actually been trying to cover it under rubble, simply because they were trying to cause, stop it from causing so much trouble around them. So that was the reason why, we're guessing. But there were just a lot of mixed opinions with this. Like, really, we just got in. Now, I'll admit, this season so far has the things that I was expecting season 1 to also have. But since how many episodes there's also here... There's only going to be seven episodes compared to six last season. But yeah, I'm going to review every single season two episode as well. But every season has been pretty much review this and review that. I mean, no. I mean, bring the trackers. I get the point they're making a plan, but I wish there was a little bit more to it. Also, Eugene, I was a bit disappointed. I wish they had introduced him in season one. Simply because we stopped introducing brand new human characters. New dragons are fine. But when it comes to the human characters, I just wish they would have brought him in. As it turns out though with e Eugene, he was actually with his father and something traveling. And his father actually decided to make the decision to send him back to his mother and his sister. Which, okay. But still. As for his appearance... Yeah, he definitely looks like a bad boy, I would say. Some people have been making the inbreed joke about Charles II with him. But 
other than that, yeah. I don't really think he's inbreed. I get the shape of the head, but I think they were just trying to go with a certain look that probably everyone can see Charles II, though, even though that was not the intention. But really, other than that thing, to my personal opinion, I think they could have just made him... He's supposed to be a bit older than all everyone else, and, well, he's pretty much going to be like the bully, like Snotloud was. Big jerk guy and everything. Guess it makes sense since you have four dragon riders, and they're actually each likable in their own way. But other than that, really, to my own opinion, this episode was actually good. I'll give it that. I actually did enjoy it. There are some questions like, why, how do they got the sensors, and I wasn't a big fan with Eugene being here. But really, other than that, this was actually pretty much a good episode. I definitely did enjoy it. Now, besides all that, I hope you did enjoy this video, and until then, this is Judging Game 44, signing out. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye!